Hong Kong. From the moment you arrive, your senses are engulfed by the perfect blend of East meets West. A city of commerce, of natural beauty, of 10 trillion stairs, of one of the world's most impressive and stunning skylines, and some of the greatest food you will find anywhere on Earth. It's impossible to visit this incredible city and not leave in some way changed by it. Every time I visit, I discover some new hidden treasure, some new delectable meal, and some new fascinating pocket in this ever-changing, ever-growing urban wilderness. So come with me as I show you what to do, where to stay, and of course, what to eat in the Pearl of the Orient. Tip number one, how to get around. When you fly into Hong Kong, you'll be landing in the impressive Hong Kong airport. From here, the simplest and absolute best way to get into the city is the Airport Express. For 115 Hong Kong dollars, it takes you directly from the airport to Kowloon or Hong Kong Station in about 25 minutes. Once in the city, there are a number of ways to get around. The public transportation system is efficient, immaculately clean, and gets you pretty much everywhere you need to be. And maybe the most important thing you can do to get around the city in terms of convenience is to get an octopus card, which will work on trains, buses, those adorable double-decker trams, which are actually a really fun way to get around the city. The card also works on ferries at 7-Eleven vending machines and can even be used to hire a live donkey to carry your bags around town. Okay, I'm being informed that that is untrue. You cannot hire a donkey. But even with your handy non-donkey renting octopus card in hand, Hong Kong is actually quite walkable. Plus, walking gives you the opportunity to stare up and marvel at the towering cityscape rising high above you. Just, you know, don't become so enamored by the buildings that you accidentally walk into traffic. I know that seems like an obvious tip, but I've seen it happen. Sorry. And while you're walking around, just be prepared for the many, many, many hills. This city is like San Francisco on steroids. So if you have a rollerboard suitcase, maybe use public transportation or even splurge on a taxi instead of trying to drag your bag all the way up the hill. Ah, it will never end. Oh, that's pretty. And speaking of taxis, compared to most cities of its ilk, like New York or London, Hong Kong taxis are surprisingly affordable. You can also use the brilliant mid-level escalators if you're staying in Central, though I personally think walking up all the hills and stairs is awesome. Why did nobody tell me about these hills? Tip number two, where to stay. So let me get this one right out of the way and let you know that Hong Kong is not a cheap city. In fact, depending on how you like to travel, it can be downright, uh, what's the word? Um, crazy expensive. But don't fret, there are some budget options out there. I found my room at the charming Hong Kong Mini Hotel for around $80 a night on Expedia or one of those aggregate sites. Was it fancy? No, it was, well, Mini, but it was clean, centrally located, and had a surprisingly fantastic view. The next big question is in which part of the city do you want to stay? Unless you're staying in the new territories, you'll likely be staying in either Kowloon or Hong Kong Island. Both are wonderful, both have their own unique and distinct vibe, so it really comes down to personal taste. If you want markets and shopping, Kowloon is your best option. If you want to be right in the middle of everything, surrounded by those famous skyscrapers and the historic hilly streets, I'd choose Hong Kong Island. I always stay in Hong Kong Island because I just love the vibe there and Kowloon is super easy to get to. But if you truly can't decide, stay a couple of nights in both and decide which side of the harbor you like better. Tip number three, where to eat. A whirlwind of edible delights, a kaleidoscope of delightful flavors, and other cool descriptions as well. You can't walk more than 10 feet in this city without bumping into something delicious. Yes, that's a fact, 10 feet. I read that on some guy's Twitter. But seeing as I can only feature a handful of places, these are just a smattering of my favorite spots in the city. So if I did leave off your favorite spot, throw it in the comments below. Or just call me a douchebag hipster. Or that I look like a washed up 90s sitcom star. Or my personal favorite, that I look like Marv from Home Alone. The internet can be such a cruel place. <laughs> anyway, my first spot is in no way a secret, but it's so good I had to include it. 
Tim Ho Wan. On the second level of Hong Kong Station sits one of the cheapest Michelin restaurants in the world. The line for this place will be intimidating, but just wait it out. I promise you it's worth it. Everything on the menu is incredible, but if there is one must hit item here, it is the baked barbecue pork buns. A perfectly baked semi-sweet flaky roll stuffed with succulent tender barbecue pork. These little things are worth the 13 hour flight to Hong Kong by themselves. Yes, this place has a lot of hype, and yes, it lives up to it. Continuing our tour of dim sum, we arrive at another Hong Kong staple, the Luck Yu Tea House. Come here early in the morning, hang out with locals reading their papers or enjoying their tea, and chow down on some fabulous dim sum. And don't miss the always popular Lin Huang Tea Room where you can navigate through the crazy crowds to grab some authentic and old school dim sum. Next up, Hong Kong is the capital of earth-shatteringly delectable roast meats. And for that, I have two favorite spots. The roast duck at Cam's is arguably the best you'll find anywhere in the world. Crispy, juicy, and packed with flavor, there is a reason that this place has a Michelin star. Also, their suckling pig has perfectly crispy skin and beyond tender meat, and their pork belly char siu is probably my single favorite thing to eat in the city. There will be a line, and when they run out of meat, they close, so come here early. My other favorite spot for roast meat is the insanely good Joy Hang Meats. Everything I've had here is heavenly. Also, it's cheaper than cams if you feel like a slightly more affordable pile of roast meat. Next up, noodles. First, the Hong Kong institution that is Max Noodles, a tourist mainstay, but the wonton noodle soup here is great. The secret to their broth is dried flounder, which I guess isn't really a secret anymore. And wasn't really a secret to begin with because I quite easily Googled it. And right across the street from Max is Sim Chai Ki, whose wonton noodle soup is, in my opinion, actually better than Max. I know, them's fighting words, but I say try both spots and make up your own mind. My next restaurant is one of my favorite spots anywhere in Asia, Little Bao. Their steamed buns with different options of meats are inventive, savory, sweet, spicy, and just plain tasty. Come here, eat these little pockets of wonder, and wonder how you've lived so long without them. Next, Ho Li Fook. The food at Ho Li Fook is just special. No other word to describe it. The Wagyu beef short ribs might be the most tender meat I've ever eaten, and their chicken wings are without question the best I've ever had. This place is a must hit on any trip to Hong Kong. It may not be the cheapest place in town, but holy fook, is it delicious. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't even finish that. <laughs> For some truly cheap food, don't miss Hong Kong's famous street food. My favorite street food item are the curried fish balls. And to end our food segment, we hit some of Hong Kong's Rock Your Taste Buds baked goods. First, head to Tai Chung Bakery for some of the best egg tarts in the city. Egg tarts are basically little custard tarts, but the texture is so perfect and creamy, the crust so crumbly and delicious, and they're just sweet enough without being cloying. There are excellent egg tart bakeries all over the city, but Tai Chung just happens to be my favorite, probably because it was my first. And you never forget your first. Inappropriate. <laughs> Next, Hong Kong's unique looking but totally scrumptious egg waffle. And last, but certainly not least, we arrive at the famous pineapple bun. A flaky, semi-sweet bun that's vaguely shaped like a pineapple, hence the name, I guess, and stuffed with an actual stick of butter that melts in your mouth. I wish I could go back in time and erase them from my memory so I could experience them for the first time again. In my opinion, the best spot in the city is Honglin Restaurant in Kowloon. Bonus, pineapple buns are surprisingly good for you. Okay, they are not good for you, but they are good for you. Diet when you get home. And like I said, this is just a tiny sampling of the food in Hong Kong, so my advice, look for a crowd. If there's a throng of eager locals waiting outside a restaurant, chances are you're in for a good meal. Tip number four, explore the many wonderful and colorful neighborhoods of this bustling, ever-changing city. Make sure to check out the Central Business District for the sheer awe-inspiring buildings that grow around you like a canyon of architectural splendor. Wan Chai is a great neighborhood with incredible food, shopping, and some affordable hotels. Chim Sao Choi in Kowloon is another excellent neighborhood that's centrally located with outstanding food and shopping, a vibrant energy, a gorgeous waterfront promenade with a perfect view of that iconic skyline and close to the many fascinating markets that Kowloon has to offer. Don't miss the Symphony of Lights show every night at 8 p.m. 
Mong Kok is a fun, busy, and lively area. I also love wandering around the charming Soho area in central on Hong Kong Island. Make sure to stroll the many streets and feel like you've been transported back in time. Some of my favorite streets are Wellington Street and the many alleys, old stairways, courtyards, and side streets that branch off from Hollywood Road. Speaking of fascinating places, tip number five, make sure to hit up some of Hong Kong's truly impressive and phenomenal markets. First, one of the most famous markets in Asia, the Temple Street Night Market in Kowloon. This place will blow your mind. Stall after stall of crafts, art, and knickknacks, this, simply put, is one of the most fun markets in the world. For an awesome dining experience, make sure to get some spicy crab at one of the Dai Pai Dongs, outdoor eateries that spill out onto the street. And then a side corner of the market, try some truly tempting Nepalese food at Monica Mana. Next up, the equally enjoyable Mong Kok Ladies Market, another perfect place to wander, shop, and explore. The antique market on Upper Lascar Row is set on a historic old street and is filled with countless oddities. And finally, don't miss my favorite market in Hong Kong, the picturesque Stanley Market, located on the waterfront in, as fate would have it, Stanley. A great place to shop, take in the views of the harbor, grab some food on the shore, and just stare out at the water. Tip number six, visit some of Hong Kong's many beautiful temples, monasteries, and sanctuaries. My first spot is one of the most stunning things you can see anywhere in Asia, the giant Tian Tan Buddha surrounded by the lush and rugged mountains of Lantau Island. The largest sitting Buddha in the world, stare up at the glorious statue and let it take your breath away. And right across from the Buddha is a gorgeous complex of temples. Also, getting to the Buddha is an awesome experience in and of itself. Just take the cable car at Tung Chung and enjoy the 20 minute ride high above the island. Next, tucked away right in the middle of Central on Hollywood Road, the Man Mo Temple is a beautiful, magical, and spiritual place. And finally, don't miss the impressive 10,000 Buddhas Monastery. All of them completely unique, this place has more Buddhas than you can even believe. I dare you to try and count them all. Hint, it's around 10,000. I just took a stab in the dark on that one. These temples offer a lovely respite from the ultra-modern and hectic city. And speaking of taking a respite from the din of the city, tip number seven, make sure to visit Hong Kong Park. Located right in the middle of Hong Kong Island's business district, this park is a splendid escape. Gorgeous walkways, cascading waterfalls, ponds with adorable turtles, and even an aviary full of exotic birds. This is a terrific place to stroll, do some Tai Chi, or just sit back and take in a completely unique view of the city, reminding you that you're still in Hong Kong, but feel like you're miles away. Tip number eight, hop on the historic Star Ferry for some of the best views of the city. Carrying passengers across the harbor since 1888, the Star Ferry runs from Hong Kong Island to Kowloon and back all day long. It costs next to nothing. I'm talking like 25 cents US, and it offers some of the absolute best views of Victoria Harbor. The experience is equally worthwhile both day and night. In fact, it's so much fun and so affordable that I just rode it back and forth for about an hour. And speaking of views of the city, tip number nine, take in the breathtaking vistas at the top of Victoria Peak. There are a few ways to get to the top. The tram is a fun, easy, quick trip to the top of the peak, but beware, the lines can be Disneyland long. So unless you're going very early in the morning and probably on a weekday, I'd say just take a taxi. It only takes about 15 minutes to reach the top and the price is about the same as what you pay for the tram. Once at the top, there's a new fancy observation deck built an additional 300 feet above the original viewpoint. And I guess it's worth the seven or so dollars to check it out. But honestly, the original viewing point has been there since the 1920s and the view is just as good now as it was then. Walk out to the edge, stare down at the dynamic city glittering far below and take in the incredible vista of one of the most spectacular harbors in the world. Tip number 10, get out your debauchery shoes, if that's even a thing, because we're hitting up Hong Kong's excellent nightlife. Our first stop, Long Kwai Fong, the area with the busiest and all around craziest nightlife in the city. And all along Hollywood Road and Central, bars become so busy the crowds just sort of pile out onto the street. 
it's an awesome experience. Also, for about half the price of the drinks in Central, you can head to Lockhart Road in Wan Chai, where you can get live with the locals, make some bad decisions, and have an unforgettable night that you won't remember. It's, it's a blur. I, I got nothing. <laughs> And finally, make sure to check out some of Hong Kong's super cool speakeasies. My favorite spot is called Mrs. Pound. Hidden behind what appears to be a locksmith shop, I won't spoil the fun of figuring out how to try to get in. It took me so long. But once you do, you'll find yourself in a 1950s-esque diner with creative and inventive drinks and surprise, surprise, more absolutely enticing food. Tip number 11, continuing our theme of debauchery. If you have more than a few days in Hong Kong, use one of them to take a day trip to Macau to experience what many refer to as the Las Vegas of Asia. But contrary to its reputation, this is actually a captivating historic city and just an hour away from Hong Kong by ferry. Note, you need your passport to visit Macau, so don't forget it. Once a Portuguese colony, make sure to visit the ruins of St. Paul, check out the beautiful Senado Square, wander the many cobbled streets, visit the old churches, meander around the historic and bewitching type of village, or if you're so inclined, try your hand at gambling at one of the many casinos. Just please don't spend your entire time here. And make sure you don't leave here without trying one of Macau's famous Portuguese egg tarts, or like 15 of them. They're completely different than the Chinese style of egg tart, but equally tasty. My favorite egg tarts in Macau are at the famous Lord Stowe's. Tip number 12, head outside the city and experience some of the splendid nature that surrounds Hong Kong. Let's start with my two favorite hikes. First up, Dragon's Back is a great beginner hike with lofty views of the popular Sheko Beach. And if you continue the hike to the end, you'll be rewarded with another beautiful beach called Big Wave Bay Beach. I have no footage of this because the day I went, it was crazy foggy and cold. So instead, I've drawn you a picture of what I imagine it would look like. True artistry. You are welcome. Next, Lion Rock. Definitely more strenuous, but still manageable. Is it bad if I can feel my pulse behind my eyeballs? The hike up the gorgeous Lion Rock offers a different, but equally breathtaking view of the city. Next, hit up one of the many gorgeous little islands that surround Hong Kong. There's so many, but I adore the laid back and astoundingly beautiful Chung Chow Island, a lovely hour ferry ride away from the city. While on the island, explore the lush foliage, visit the many perfect secluded little beaches, and grab some of the best seafood I've ever had in my life in the enchanting little main town. Another alluring spot is the Tai O Fishing Village, also on Lantau Island. Located an easy bus ride away from the Chan Tan Buddha, this place is just delightful. Take a boat ride through the village and stare up at the houses built on stilts over the water, grab some local grub, or just chill out and have a beer. Hong Kong may be a fast-paced, hectic, global city, but maybe the thing I adore about it the most is that just outside the city, you can be completely transported to beaches, mountains, islands, and little villages that feel worlds apart from the bustling city just a few miles away. And finally, my personal travel motto, just wander the city and allow yourself to get lost. Every corner of this city has some unbelievable place to eat, something amazing to see or do, and some surprise waiting down every alley, market row, or old cobblestone staircase. You see something interesting? walk towards it. Hong Kong is a spectacle, deeply rooted in its history while barreling forward into the future. This city has certainly changed dramatically since my father was stationed here in the 1960s, or my mother and grandmother visited in 1985, or even since my first visit just five years ago. The street food stalls that once littered the city have almost entirely disappeared. New buildings seemingly spring up every day, but the heart of this seductive, beautiful, and enthralling city beats on. What will Hong Kong look like in 10 years? I have no idea. But I can't wait to visit year after year to wander, adventure, and eat my way through Asia's world city. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, punch that subscribe button, and flick that little notification bell. Also, like I said, if I left off any of your favorite spots, please throw them in the comments below. I always love to hear what you have to say. One huge final thank you to Gabriel, Joella, and Anthony, my road warrior out there who helped me film for like 14 hours. You can check out his YouTube channel here and some of my other videos somewhere up there. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon from somewhere else in the world.